Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing The Lord of the Rings Return to Moria and we're going to be going over the six suits of armor that I've isolated thus far in the game. So, uh, as anybody that plays the game will likely know, you unlock things as you explore through various methods. One method of unlocking things might be uh, finding these schematics, which you'll find by repairing statues or repairing forges or the first time that you smelt an ingot. Those are the type of things that will unlock the ability to create new technology in the game, that being newer, more advanced types of weapons, armor, and tools. Most of the stuff you're going to find is going to be, at least in the armor department, is going to be through one of two different ways. It's either going to be repairing statues and getting schematics, or uh, unlocking Muznikan chests and getting schematics. So whether it's one of those things will determine whether it's one of those things or if it's repairing a forge or completing a mission or something like that is neither here nor there. Today I'm just going to be showing you the different suits of armor, uh, kind of comparing, contrasting, going over some of the appearances and where in the game you generally find them, and then I will look at the different crafting materials that it takes to make each of these. So, with all that in mind, let's just dive on in and start off with the most simple one, uh, that being the Iron Hills armor. So, this suit of armor is the one that requires the most, I guess, suspension of uh, expectations for it. A, because it just doesn't look all that cool, and B, doesn't provide any ridiculous amount of armor. It's obviously better to have than not to have, uh, and this one is the one that you will find first. So, while exploring the very first section of the Western Halls, the section that you start the game in, as you repair statues, you will unlock the schematics for Iron Hills armor. Now, now, the downside of this suit of armor is that it's not actually a complete suit. I have now gone through the entire region very, very thoroughly on two separate playthroughs with two different characters on two different worlds, just to make sure that there was no mistake. And the only armor I could find for the Iron Hills armor is the Iron Hills armor, which you can see is a armor tier one. It says a basic breastplate for both mining and defense, and Iron Hills dwarf's favorite, and the Iron Hills gloves. So it's also tier one, follows the same pattern. The hat is the trapper hat. That's what I'm wearing here. It says with two flaps up, this hat makes a statement. It is definitely not linked to the Iron Hills armor in anything more than it kind of looks like a hat that you might expect a dwarf in a colder region to wear, and the Iron Hills is a slightly colder region than a lot of dwarfs might be found living in. That being said, they're underground, so it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, and the pants are Erebor pants. They're not even tier one. I could not find any tier one armored pants in the game, so I just took the ones that I thought looked the best and set them with this suit. So technically, the suit of armor, even if you can assume the trapper hat or one of the other hats that you can make in this game, which to be fair for miscellaneous headwear, there are several. You have the long bottom hat. It's also a tier two hat. You have the miner's helmet, which is arguably the probably, probably the one that goes with the suit the best, uh, just because it's also a tier one and it has the advantage of having a candle on it. Uh, so, you know, it looks right with the armor. The only reason I don't have it associated with it is for some reason the miner's hat will fall off the armor stand, whereas the, uh, hat that I was wearing doesn't. But anyway, uh, you could associate that with it most likely the most the best because it's also tier one. Uh, as far as miscellaneous helmets, just to look at them right now, we have two other ones that I found. There is the Last Alliance helmet, which is a tier one helmet uh, that is quite cool. I like the way that it looks a lot. And the Dimril helmet, which is a tier two helmet. Those are both uh, not associated with full suits of armor, at least not based on what I have found. Maybe I've been doing something wrong and I just haven't found the rest of those suits. But as of right now, that that's it for those ones. I found weapons for them. I have the Dimril Spear and the Last Alliance Shield and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, the Iron Hills armor in and of itself is nothing all that impressive. I think it looks fine, but uh, the protection it offers is minimal. And for style points, it is relatively low. Like I said, you find all these schematics in the very beginning uh, portion of the Western Halls, just this section here prior to the Elven Quarter. As far as crafting these pieces of armor, it's very simple. The Iron Hills armor itself requires four iron ingots, two hide scraps, and three cloth scraps. Iron ingots are the only thing there that you're going to need to try at all to have. The hide scraps and cloth scraps are things that you will just commonly loot all the time. Uh, the Iron Hills gloves, same thing. Two iron ingots, two hide scraps, and six cloth scraps. But yeah, that is it for the very first, the tier one Iron Hills armor. Like I said, not all that impressive, but when you're first starting off the game, it is your only option. So it's got that going for it. See, for some reason, the miner's hat sits down by the feet instead of being up on the head. Our next armor that we're taking a look at is the Erebor armor, and this is your tier two armor. So it says light steel 
armor, a pale comparison of the ancient Belagost style, but light enough for fighting and traveling. And so, you know, it's Erebor stuff. It's themed after the Lonely Mountain. Uh, it is a significant improvement over the Iron Hills armor in two ways, one of which being it is a full suit of armor with, uh, you know, a helmet and legs, and so therefore just even if the stats were exactly the same, this one would offer better protection. I also think it looks better. It's a better looking suit of armor. You can see that we've got a lot of leather and chain mail elements with a little bit of plate armor on like the pauldrons and then obviously the helmet itself. Uh, so aesthetically speaking, I think it's a big upgrade over the Iron Hills and stat wise, it's definitely a significant improvement. As far as where to find the schematics for this one, you're going to find these ones by repairing uh, statues down in the lower depths and the lower Western halls. So you can see these are the upper Western halls, the stuff that's highlighted here. Once you've gone through into the mines and you've got down into the lower Western halls, which is all of this stuff that is currently not highlighted, uh, you will start finding statues in there and repairing statues in there will find you Erebor uh, armor schematics. And so that is how you find the schematics for how to craft these. As far as specifically crafting them, uh, the materials you need are going to stay relatively simple. So we're moving up to steel ingots and hides instead of iron ingots and hide scraps. So hides I've showed before, you get those by killing larger animals. So any of your prey animals, like the deer type things that you'll find in the elven quarter, as well as bears, things like that will dry drop full hides, which you need to craft this. The steel ingot is the same materials as iron. It's just iron and coal, but you need to have unlocked the ability to make steel ingots and you do that by repairing the Great Forge of Narvi, which I have a video on the channel showing how to do that if you do not know. But just going through materials for the Erebor ring mail, you need four steel ingots, four hides, and four cloth scraps. For the Erebor planks gauntlets, two steel ingots, two hides, and two cloth scraps. Erebor boots is two steel ingots, four hides, and eight cloth scraps. And for the Erebor city watch helmet, just two steel ingots and two cloth scraps. So all fairly simple and straightforward. Like I said, materials are not hard. So once you've repaired the Great Forge of Narvi and started to explore the uh, lower region of the western court uh, of the western halls, you really realistically should start crafting this as it is a significant upgrade over that of the Iron Hills armor. So that is the Erebor city watch armor. Let's move on to the third suit. So our next suit of armor that we're going to be looking at is the Belagost ringmail and you unlock the ability to craft this once you've made your way into the lower deeps which I'll show you on the map and you've found the Belagost forge because by that point you're going to be unlocking the materials and the abilities to get this. You will unlock the individual pieces themselves again just like the previous suits by repairing statues and finding the schematics that way but you will also need the materials to craft it. So as far as uh, visual improvements on this one it's huge. I think this one is a big step up over the Erebor one. It's got a similar style so we've got that ringmail aesthetic going on but we have quite a bit more heavy plate over the torso and on the arms. The helmet itself is a very cool uh, masked helmet which is famous uh, for dwarves in Tolkien's lore because it, it was meant to help them fight against dragons and stuff like that. So I definitely really like the aesthetic appearance of the Belagost ringmail. Uh, on top of that it definitely has a big enough stat boost over the last one providing you significantly more protection and uh, the durability being significantly higher so therefore it will just take more damage before you have to repair it. Keep in mind with all armor in this game once you've reached zero for the uh, durability on a on any piece of armor it no longer provides any protection even if you're still wearing it. Uh, so that being said uh, I just like to read the description it says an ancient design of Shinor rings invented in the first age adorned with hide and fur to protect against the fierce winters and cold deeps the clan faced. So yes the Belagost ringmail is quite cool looking uh, and on top of that it has excellent stats and the durability is higher than previous suits. That being said if you want to craft this we're going to need to go to the Great Forge of Belagost. Or if you've gotten to the point where you can build your own Kuzdul Forge, you can craft it there. So you don't have to do it in Belagost, but that's the first place where you'll be able to if you have the right materials. And so uh, just looking at it here, you can see that our materials that we need are Shinor ingots and leather, as well as Numenorean cloth. So uh, again, significantly more advanced materials than we've done in the past. So for the Belagost helmet, you need two Shinor ingots and one leather. You can make leather at the loom. Once you've built a loom, you can use hide to make leather, and that's how you get leather. As far as the Shinor ingot, I showed in a previous video where I showed how to craft the first stage pickaxe and the Shinor hammer, how to make Shinor ingots. They can be made at the Belagost Forge uh, using tin ore, copper ore, and silver ore. So that's how you make Shinor ingots. Uh, but we need two of them and one leather for the helmet. We need three of them, one leather, and two Numenorean cloth, which can also be made at the loom. Uh, for the gauntlets, for the boots, we need two ingots, two leather, and four Numenorean cloth. And for the ring mail, four ingots, four leather, and three Numenorean cloth. So that is the materials required to make the Belagost 
Exhaust, uh, Helmet, Gauntlets, Boots, and Rainmail. So that is our Tier 3 armor in Return to Mario. Let's move on to the next one. So this, the next one we're looking at is, is Durin's Guard armor. This is Tier 5 armor, so it's a significant improvement over the Belagost armor. It is mostly plate, as you can see, aesthetically, so we've ditched the lighter aspects of the mail and stuff like that. Now you can see that our person is wearing some sort of a padded armor type, I would guess Gamson, and over top of it, pretty much just comprehensive plate. So we have a full plate Kyrus, full plate pauldrons, including a Gorget, uh, go uh, plate gauntlets, plate boots, and upper thigh armor. Uh, don't know if there's a cod piece, but that'd be fun. We do have a less comprehensive helmet on this one, but it is just guard armor for Durin, who at this time was living underground in Moria and there were no dragons. So it makes sense that it would not be the full all the way mask down to the, you know, basically sternum covering the helmet. So this is the Durin's guard armor. I really like the way this one looks. It's slightly more adorned with some gems, and so therefore it has a fancier look to it. But just overall, I like the general appearance of it. Personally, I think I would still like the look of mail under it, even though the Gamson would obviously be, you know, an excellent addition to such comprehensive plate armor. Uh, I think that the mail looks better. Uh, as far as the description for this goes, it says, Worn by the King's personal guard, this armor protects against the shadow. It was essential in Durin's victory. So, an excellent suit of armor. As far as where and how to get this one, we're going to be moving past the Lower Deeps and into Dwaro Delph. And so, once you're in Dwaro Delph, the central area that you're going to be locating in the big central square is a big devastated room where the Balrog caused a lot of damage a long time ago. Uh, the good thing is, is there are two forges in this area and it's a very large section, so you're going to find enough statues to unlock all of these, as well as the next suit of armor. But for this suit of armor, where you're going to need to go is going to be the Great Forge of Durin. And so I'll show you what that looks like. And so, like I said, we're down in Dwarodelf. We're now in the chamber for the Great Forge of Durin. When you get into the Great Forge of Durin, you're going to notice a giant troll king is sitting inside here. So you'll have a boss fight to do if you want to do this one. So it's much easier with friends. I did it solo, but it definitely takes, uh, you know, a little bit more skill and a lot more prep time. So, ooh, we're almost out of food. Uh, so anyway, once you get into this area, and if you've got the schematics you found from fixing various things, and you've got the forge fired up, you will be able to craft it. And so to make this stuff, we're going to be using star metal ingots, durinul iron ingots, sunstones, and fine leather. Those are our materials. Oh, as well as fine cloth. And so this one definitely has a lot more complex materials than previous ones. As far as how to get these things, I, I haven't broken down into videos showing uh, the advancement at this point, but in simple terms, you're going to need star metal ingots, which you can get by mining star metal ingot from veins in the wall down lower, uh, and then crafting them into ingots. You can do that here at this forge. Uh, for durinal iron ingots, those you're going to get by using a salt bath technique on Gundabad scrap, which you'll get by killing specific orcs, the Gundabad style orcs. Uh, they will drop that occasionally, so it's definitely a more rare material to get. Sunstones are a similar thing. They are not nearly as common as you might think, given that they look a lot like true quartz, but they are definitely not. Sunstones are much rarer and can only be found down in specific parts of Moria, and oftentimes I find them most just by killing the orcs in the same region where you're going to get your Gundabad scrap. Uh, and then fine leather on the bright side is relatively, as well as fine cloth, is easy to make. You can make it on your loom as long as you have a spinning wheel attachment. So as far as all of that goes, this so far suit of armor has the most complex uh, materials to make it up, but it is an excellent suit of armor that provides great protection, has very high durability, and looks great. So again, like I said, you're going to need to unlock the Great Forge of Durin by killing the uh, Troll King that lives here. Uh, and then you're going to need star metal ingots, durinal iron ingots, sunstones, fine leather, and fine cloth to make all of this stuff. But once you've done that, you'll have yourself an excellent suit of armor. So that is how and where to do that. Let's move on to the next suit of armor. So this next suit of armor that we're going to be looking at is a lot of people's favorite, and it is the Kazid Army Armor. So this one is tier four. So I guess it might make more sense to look at this one before the Durin Armor. But whatever the case is, uh, this one is going to be from the same region, except it's going to be a little bit easier to get than the Durin Armor. So I guess I really should have showed it first. But that's okay. I'm not going to. So you get this one in the same way that we've talked about before. So let's just talk about aesthetics first. So, so I really like the comprehensive na nature of this suit. I think it looks really, really good. I think that you've got, uh, you're once again down to the full mask covering, which looks right for the dwarves. This time we have one large horn and one small horn on the top, which is interesting. Uh, but then we've got really comprehensive armor all the way around. So solid plate with some scale overlapping for the more flexible areas. Underneath that, you can see we have Gamson. 
and you can even see, see some tacits down in the crotch region uh, with some chain mail which would offer some groin protection so so far this one is by far the most comprehensive and protective suit of armor that we've looked at in the game aesthetically I really like it and I think it works well for the dwarven aesthetic so once you've unlocked all of these schematics for this one which can be done by repairing statues inside Dwaro Delph uh, you will be able to craft this at any of the uh, Kuzdul forges that you have so you can craft these anywhere you want and or any base you want I guess I should say but once you've got all the schematics and the materials you'll be able to make this so the materials for the Khazad army armor are uh, the primary one is Khazad steel ingots which is rather simple to make all you need to make Khazad steel ingots is gold ore and iron ore so you'll be mining both of those all over the place well gold ore is definitely less common but once you're down into that region of the map you will start finding gold ore veins relatively frequently and you'll be able to mine them uh, iron ore you should have plenty of so Khazad steel is relatively easy to make that's all you need to make it and you can make it at any Ufahan furnace or uh, probably most of the other like the ones that you'll find at the Great Forges you can make it there too uh, but as far as crafting it goes uh, you'll need that uh, as your primary ingredient and the rest will all be stuff that you can make on your loom so for Khazad army armor you have a need for four Khazad steel ingots three fine leathers one fine cloth you also need to make sure that the forge you're making it at has a gem cutter in its radius uh, Khazad army gauntlets need the Khazad steel ingot fine leather and fine cloth Khazad army boots need Khazad steel ingots fine leather and fine cloth and Khazad army helmet needs Khazad steel ingots and fine leather and I guess I could show what you need to make those things so as far as fine leather is concerned you need leather and you need salt and you can make it here and as far as fine cloth is concerned you need Numenorean cloth and a spinning wheel which we have and uh, Numenorean cloth you need cloth scraps for so it's a relatively simple and straightforward process to get most of these materials but if you've done all of that you will have yourself the ability to make Khazad army armor which is quite good and I wore it for a good chunk of the game considering how much time you spend down in that region so that is the tier 4 armor the Khazad army gauntlets and boots and helmet and stuff our final suit of armor we're looking at the tier 6 armor that we have is mithril armor so obviously most people who know much about Lord of the Rings saw this one coming the coolest thing that you can get out of Moria is mithril and so the coolest armor in the game is going to be mithril armor so this stuff is awesome it says ah magnificent design and strength this helmet has no equal among the craft of elves men or dwarves a coat of scalloped mithril and fine cloth worth the whole of a small realm supple and strong nothing will skewer this armor using a distinct form of long ringed mail these full arm gloves can turn blades away better than most shields hard enough for battle yet comfortable enough to pair with a nightgown mithril slippers so really overall this armor is just really really cool a i like that they uh realized that the main way we see mithril in its armor form in the lord of the rings is through mail not so much plate we definitely have plate elements on this but you can see that it's got basically just a full body mithril mail covering and then a bunch of accents on it all over the place i really like the way this looks i like that it's got a crown right into the helmet because it would be rare to see anybody wearing a mithril helmet in the lord of the rings and so the lord of moria kind of feels like the only person who is likely to have this other than the high king of the dwarves but you know he's not here because during the seventh or eighth or ninth i can't remember which one it was but the one who eventually gets around to reclaiming moria in lore is not around yet so that being said this armor is awesome i love the way it looks it is definitely aesthetically my favorite suit in the entire game uh and the protection it offers is excellent that being said you do have to get to the end of the game before you can actually make this and even once you've gotten the schematics for it you might struggle to find the mithril ore that you need to make it so it's definitely challenging to get activated deactivated now it might just be me but i personally didn't get the schematics to craft this armor until i had defeated the big bad enemy and i'm not going to spoil that for you and gotten to the end and talked to uh the dwarves again uh and then after that i popped back into moria and i was able to make this armor it's entirely possible that i just missed something along the way uh but that is where i got the ability to do it and now you're going to be in the basically last region of the game for this one in the bar barazinbar region and the closest where and the place where you're going to be very near is obviously the mithril load now this one is kind of a no-brainer because it has to do with mithril so uh, remembering where to find this one is not difficult but once again you'll find yourself inside a big old forge region that you have to repair and once again i turned it into a tiny little outpost now you can see this one's not nearly as developed as uh the other ones that i've done but it is what it is as far as crafting materials for this one they are a doozy so for the mithril helmet 
helmet, you will need one mithril ingot, three rubies, and one fine leather. For the mithril armor, you'll need three mithril ingots, three sapphire, three fine leather, and four fine cloth. For the mithril gloves, you'll need two mithril ingots, three amethyst, and four fine leather. And for the mithril slippers, four mithril ingots, three diamond, three fine leather, and three fine cloth. So this one is not only heavy on mithril, a substance that is extremely rare and hard to find in the game, at least until way at the end, and uh, but also utilizes the rarest of the gems. I mean, sapphire is relatively common. I have a lot of sapphire sitting around. But even ruby, which is the next most common, I only have like two stacks of it after an entire playthrough on this account. Amethyst, I don't even have a full stack. Diamond, I only have like a half dozen of them sitting around, especially after making this armor. So the gems are quite rare. You have to go to the lower deeps, into the very, very low sections of that uh, to try and mine those, uh, at least reliably. Other than that, you can find them in troll hordes or by killing enemies and they will sometimes drop them. Uh, as far as the materials that we're looking at, oh, I had some mithril smithing at that time. So mithril ingots, ingots, you need six mithril ore to make one mithril ingot. As far as that goes, you can mine a little bit of mithril in ore veins right here by the mithril load, but really not much. Where you're going to get the majority of your mithril, or at least I did, was after killing the big bad enemy at the end of the game, uh, I actually had that enemy dropped three full stacks of mithril ore. So, and it was funny because the enemy was like, ah, my horde is bones. It's not gold. What were you expecting? Blah, blah, blah. And then after I kill them, they drop, you know, almost 90 mithril ore, which would be worth incredibly more than extremely large quantities of gold in, you know, at least in the lore here. But yes, as far as that goes, that is your main one you need. You also need gems. Like I said, you mine them or kill for them. But that is how you get the materials to make the mithril armor, which is the best armor in the game. But that is all for today. I've showed you all of the different armors and we can look at them all one more time here. So we're starting off with the Iron Hills armor. Then we move on to the Erebor City Watch armor, the Belagost armor, the Khazad Army armor, Durin's Guard armor, and finally the Mithril armor. So that is all that I've found so far in the game. If you found any other full suits that you want to share, let me know it in the comment section. But with all that in mind, uh, that's all for today. See you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.